of math people here for this. So, uh, the book of math. So, uh, this is me, Wade James, and that's my West Shore, or my email, Wade James, or wjames at westshore.edu. So, that means I probably work at a place called West Shore Community College. Um, I have a master's in ed tech and a master's in math and science education. So, guess what I do? I teach math, I'm academic technologist, and I'm also a Canvas admin. And this is me from InstructureCon in 2014. Uh, hanging out. How many of you are, this is your first InstructureCon? Wow, really? That's cool, because you're going to get like really inspired, right? Like this is day one, and it's already been totally awesome. So if you're like me, you're going to be sitting at the Salt Lake City International Airport, probably Friday afternoon, and you're going to be waiting for your plane. You're going to be thinking, boy, should I present next year? Like I got some really good ideas. And, and so this is what I was thinking. And so I'm thinking, should I talk about my open my open math and do this, but nobody's going to want to hear me talk about mathematics and it could be boring and all this. And so I decided to get up and go for a walk, two story. And I walk into a t-shirt shop and this is what I see on the shelf. <laughs> so this is uh, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James jerseys for the Miami Heat last year when they were in the finals and that. So I, I was looking for a sign and lo and behold, I got a sign. So. So that's how I got here, okay? So we're going to do the book of math, and we're going to do this in three acts. Act one is something rotten, act two, the book of math, and act three, Canvas LTI, wicked. Uh, these are all current Broadway musicals, so there's a play on word there. So a few disclaimers. I do not work for my open math. I do not work for Canvas, and I'm not a hater, well, if, that, if, the, if that's cool. Um, but I think we have to know some of the struggles that math instructors have had in order to appreciate uh, what I'm about to present to you. So I, I apologize for starting out with a little doom and gloom, but I want to go through a few things. And so some of these things start with the idea, number one, is that uh, most math online systems are walled gardens. I just call them wall math, okay? So insert your you know, mathematics publisher name here, whatever it is. Uh, many wall math sites are infractious. You know what that means? Infractious. It means uh, kind of weaving, and you've got to go through a lot of meticulous steps in order to make something happen. And usually this is encapsulated by their access code, the account rep, tech support, and it's difficult to manage access to content. So, for example, I have three adjunct faculty that I work with, and when one of them have an issue, they call me, and then I call the account rep, and then the account rep calls tech support, and then tech support goes back and forth, and it takes three or four days for the student to finally get their access code to get into the class because their financial aid just came in late, and it's just, it's difficult to manage. You also have to manage addition changes where maybe previous access codes fail. So we have an instructor that went from the third edition to the fourth edition, and guess what? All of those third edition access codes sitting in the bookstore they don't work anymore. And now the bookstore's mad at me because they've bought all these access codes and the student bought one online, right from Amazon, thinking it's gonna work, but it doesn't work. And so just complications like this happen. And also format, uh, format changes the questions. Uh, I taught a physics class one time and the problems that were presented from the publisher were wonderful. They were algorithmically generated problems. You know, you launch a projectile at a certain angle with a certain velocity and you had to put in numbers for answers. Well, in a version change, they decided to go with a third party vendor. They swapped their technology out and they changed all those problems to multiple choice. And it just killed me. I was like, what? Like, I, I really felt like the, the rug was pulled out from underneath me. Here we had this great system and I was powerless to say, can't we keep the old thing that was really great? Why did you go to this? And so these, keep in mind, are not deal breakers. This didn't make me throw in the towel, say, that's it, I'm done. Technology is never going to work with mathematics. But it was very frustrating. Okay, the second thing was integration with your LMS. And early on, there really wasn't any integration. Your integration was putting a hyperlink in your shell to go to wall math, or wall math right? Uh, students had two logins, so they had your LMS login, they also had the wall math login. And transferring grades, that meant, you know, printing out your grades from one and typing them in on the other. So that was frustrating. 
Recently, things have gotten a little bit better. You can now do more embedded content. You still basically have two accounts. So they, they've still got to set up your Canvas account and then your Walmath account. Uh, but now they've got SSO, so once that's set up, uh, you can kind of go in, but really there's still two accounts. And then grade transfer, what I found is that, uh, I call it wall sync. You have to go into Walmath, tell Walmath, send my grades to Canvas. And then once they get to Canvas, you know, how did they come in? Were they come in as assignments or, you know, how did that work? So again, some frustrations. Finally, cost. You know, 230 bucks uh, for my students to have the new textbook and the access code. I mean, 230 bucks. I teach at a rural community college. Students don't make my class because they don't have money for gas. They can't, they don't know if they're gonna be able to afford childcare next week, okay? $230 for one class, for one semester is kind of steep. And I was thinking, well, have there been any real changes in algebra recently? You know, where's the content? <laughs> you know, Newton kicked out his calculus in what, 1660s? So if you're teaching anything below calculus, you're a few hundred years old, right? So I went out to Wikipedia and I asked the question. And you can go out to Wikipedia and here's the list of advances in algebra, right? And you'll notice, uh, if you can see this, you, you get up to about the 1800s and then it stops and there's nothing new until 1981. And, and even the 81 stuff, I mean, it's way up here, right? Like you're not teaching your students this stuff. This is like advanced abstract algebra type stuff, right? So, the, so we're teaching a content, many of us are teaching content that, are, you know, 300, 400, 500 years old, maybe 1,000 years old. Why do I need a new textbook edition every three years? It's the same content. We're still solving for X, and we're still using the same rules. So this is part of my something's rotten, right? Like, just frustration. So, act two. I found the book of math, and my book of math is called My Open Math. And this isn't the silver bullet, but it pushes us in the right direction. My Open Math was uh, created by David Lippman while he was at Washington State in 2005. And then in 2011, he decided to make it available to everyone. Sort of like Khan Academy, right? Like, hey, here's this cool thing, and we're just going to broadcast it out to everyone. So um, the benefits of my open math, and we're going to go into some of these in a little bit. First of all, it's open, kind of like Canvas. You know, it, it's open. The public sites are hosted, but if you want to run a private site, go to GitHub download the source code, install it, run it on your server, whatever. You can do the private thing if you want. Again, just like Canvas, right? Like you can go get Canvas on GitHub and install it on your, but why would you, right? Just host it for me. Um, once this got out into the wild, people started developing questions and content for it. And you can go to, and I, I apologize, the scaling of my slides a little bit off, but opentextbookstore.com. And this is a resource where people have made textbooks that you can use for your class. And they cover everything from pre-algebra all the way to calculus. With My Open Math, you can import entire courses, which we'll show you, and the problems are editable. Not just like the content, like you know, changing words, but you can go in and change the random number variables. You know, like if, if it randomly picks a number between one and 10, you can change that to randomly pick a number between one and 100. And if there is an error in the question, you can go in and fix it. So it, it's pretty cool. The second good thing about My Open Math is its integration with Canvas. We are talking about a tight integration. My Open Math keeps it simple. The LTI integration is simple to set up. Importing content and links is pretty simple. And it's simple for students to access. They don't even know they're using a third party site because all they do is they log into Canvas and My Open Math through the LTI uses their username and password from Canvas to create an account. They also keep it fresh. Immediate grade passbacks, and immediate, like, you know, 0.5 seconds, it's pretty fast. And then immediate refresh of problems. So if you do decide to edit a problem, it's immediately refreshed for your students. And the best part, F-R-E-E, -E. free. I've been on my open math for two and a half years, and I haven't paid a dime. So David Littman, if you're watching this, uh, you know, I owe you dinner. So call me, we'll do burgers and beer or something and hang out. The user created content, the textbooks are free. Free digital download, PDF, you know, a 1500 page textbook, download it. 
If you do want a paper textbook, there are publishers like lulu.com that will print, bind, and ship the textbook to your door for $17. And if you catch them on a holiday like Father's Day or you know, Fourth of July, you get 10% off. You know, so watch for deals. I mean, it's like, ah, 10% off my $17 textbook. But I mean, that's pretty cheap, pretty cheap. All right, so this is the good stuff. All right, and now let's take a look at this LTI integration. And it is wicked. So I'm going to start you out at my open math. And, and the URL is myopenmath.com. So just go in and create your username or create an account, punch in your username and password. It'll bring you to this dashboard, which uh, contains like discussion posts and forum threads and stuff like that. But most importantly, the courses, courses that we're teaching are up there. So you click on the course that you're teaching, and you go down to the course settings. And you click there, and down at the bottom is the LTI access information. And there's two pieces of information you need to know. Uh, first of all is your, your super secret code right, that you create. And then you have to make a choice. Do you want your students to be able to access the content through the LMS and through My Open Math, like go to both those, either one to log in, or do you want them to access only through the LMS? And I always choose the second one. I don't want my students going to my open math and logging in, and I want them to go in through only one pipeline, which is Canvas. So they go into Canvas, and that's the only way they're allowed to get into the content. Okay, so you're going to need these two pieces of information, and then we're going to leave my open math and go into Canvas. So now we're in Canvas, and you go into your course, you go to course settings. Then you click on the Apps tab, and you go and find the My Open Math LTI app. And it's in there. Uh, they're listed alphabetically, so just go find it. And then you click Add App. And you'll get this dialog box, and this is where you paste the information we copied from My Open Math. And so you put in your consumer key which is the, the code whether you want the students to go in directly or, you know, or two ways to go in through the My Open Math and Canvas or just through Canvas, and then the shared secret. And then once you punch this information in, uh, you're connected. And um, you can start adding assignments right into your Canvas shell. So we're going to go to a live demo and show you this. Um, but before we do, once again, that's my email address. Um, I have a Twitter handle, Wade James. But um, at yesterday's keynote, that was like the first time I've used it in like three years. So, so uh, but, but I'll check it. But let's go to this live demo. Okay. So uh, I'm here in Canvas. And you'll notice that I have some assignments built here. You can't see that side, can you? Right. So um, what we'll do is, uh, you'll notice I've got some homework assignments here. And I'm missing 1.1, so I'm going to add 1.1. I've already got the integration set up. So I'm just going to go to Assignments. And I'm going to say Create a New Assignment. And under the Assignment Type, I'm going to say External Tool because that's how you connect with an LTI. And we could give it a name. I'm actually going to go right into advanced options. So this way you can see this. So uh, I'll give this an assignment name, 1.1. 1 .1. Um, we'll call this uh, Book of Math. And then we'll scroll down. And we'll give it, say, 10 points. And we'll put it in this, and we'll say points. And under submission type, where we have online, we're going to say external tool. And when you click in this dialog box, this is where your LTI interface opens up. And so if you have multiple LTIs, like I've got Canva badges and Dropbox and all that, uh, you're going to scroll down to My Open Math. So there it is. And I click on that. And now it's talking to my open math, and it's going to say, do you want to continue? And I say yes. And I've already got this connected with a specific course. And here are all the content available in that course. 
So I've got homework assignments, there's videos and discussion threads, all kinds of stuff. And so I'm going to select this 1.1 linear equations and graphs, and I'm going to say make placement, and then click all the buttons you need to to save it. We'll say save and publish. And now this assignment is available. And what you're seeing here is actually the MyOpenMath interface. Uh, problem sets are off on the left, and the actual problem is on the right. And so let's go in and take a look at this as a student. So I'm going to go into a home page, and I need to add this assignment into my module. So I'm going to say add something, and it's an assignment. So there it is, 1.1, Book of Math. So I add it in there. And then I'll just uh, I'll move it up here. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to uh, settings. I'm going to go into student view. So I'll go in as a test student to show you uh, what this looks like from the student perspective. So the student comes in, and they go right here, and they click on it. And continue. And here is the homework assignment. And um, let, let's do this one. So we'll say uh, slope of the line between these two points. So 10 minus negative 9, 10 minus negative 9. Is that 19? And then uh, 2 minus 6, I think that's negative 4. Uh, we can hit preview, and it will decimalize it for us. So we don't necessarily need our calculator, because it does the decimalization. And we'll say submit. And green means good, you got it right. So I got, I got one point out of that. Just, yeah, fire away. Yeah, so the, the question is, it says it's being graded. Is it done on the Canvas or MyOpenMath? Uh, what happened there in a, an instant was it submitted it to MyOpenMath. MyOpenMath graded it and then sent the report back to Canvas. Yes, and, and if I hit refresh, and you know, very observant, it is in the Canvas gradebook right now, but um, I have to kind of refresh the page. And you'll see the little blue dot next, oh, you're not gonna see it. I'm, I'm not a Mac native, and so I'm, how's that, is that better? There you go. So now you see, oh, I've got a little one under my grades, and so you click on grades, and it should uh, display your score. And it's probably going to be way down at the bottom because I haven't, there it is. So one out of ten. And so it, it does it uh, instantaneously, instantaneously. I believe it does. I haven't tested it personally on screen readers, but um, yeah, I, I haven't tested that out, and that's something that we're still looking at. So yeah, one more. Yeah, yep. Yep, that's what we're going to do next. So, um, and why would you want to manually grade? I mean, <laughs> and these are, these are very much, um, you know, auto-graded. Students go in, crank on this stuff, and if they have a question, they post it to the form and they do all this. But, yeah, so, so I just want to show you that this works, you know, that the live grade transfers. Let's get out of this and actually go to uh, My Open Math. And the reason I shut down Chrome is because, yeah, we're going to, you can end up with some permission wonkiness between Canvas and MyOpenMath once you start doing things in the LTI. So I'm going to actually open up Firefox so that way I don't have to worry about that.
Don't know. Anyone know? Is it? Yeah, it does work on iOS. So we'll do this. And the question was, is it HTML5 compliant, Java, Flash? And I, I'm not sure. I know it works on uh, iOS devices. So let's see if this works. So here's the course that I had called the Book of Math. And this is the homework assignment that I created. And uh, if you go under questions, uh, here is sort of the questions that I created. And this is that question that we just did, find slope. And maybe I don't like the way this question's worded. Maybe I don't like the parameters that are set up with the question. You can go over here and click edit. And it opens up uh, everything. So you, you need to know a little coding, but not very much. So if you take a look at this window, oh, can you see that? So this problem is generating four variables, x sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 1, y sub 2. And it's saying pick a random number between one, negative 10 and 10 and do it four times for these four variables. Uh, maybe I want to make this a little bit more difficult for my students. So I make it out of negative 100 to 100. So now the random numbers that everyone gets, there's more diversity. Um, this is how it calculates D. D is the denominator, N is the numerator, and then there's some fancy coding that I don't understand, but you can probably figure out what it's doing. Like you can say, oh, it's, it's taking Y2 and minusing Y1, and it's dividing it by X2, and it's saving that as this thing, and there's all sorts of support documentation for this. So don't feel like you're out there on your own. There's a lot of good documentation. So this is the actual code. Then you go down here to the assignment or, or the text. So find the slope of the line that goes through this point, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to say structure con 2015. And you can go in and type whatever you want. And you can test the question first to make sure you didn't break anything in the formula, right? Because sometimes you get in here and you're really changing a lot of stuff. Um, and so test, uh, save and test the question. And then once you're done testing and it's saved, uh, we can actually, we'll click on this now. So now it's showing me, whoops, Firefox prevented a pop-up. Can we allow pop-ups? And we'll say save and test. And so this interface comes up and it actually shows you now what the updated question looks like. Um, as a note, it saves this question what they call locally. So you may see some text in there that says question saved to your local account, local for Wade James. It didn't save it locally like locally on my computer. It saved it locally under my MyOpenMath account. So a lot of times you'll see questions that say, save locally for Wade James, that just means I edited it and it's not local on my machine. So if we went back into my open math, or back into Canvas, pardon me, and refresh the question set, it would now say InstructureCon 2015 in that question set. And that's how easy it is to change. And the random numbers would be between negative 100 and 100. So that's how easy it is to change. So um, we have about five minutes left, and I wanted to open up uh, to see if there's any questions that people might have. Um, so let's do that. Go ahead. So uh, can you make your own, your own question banks and your own questions? Yes. Okay. Yep. What if you want to publish it to the world? That yes. Uh, on, when you create your questions and your question banks, there are privacy settings that you can select. And you can say open to everyone or private just for my class and then all the variations in between. There's three or four different variations. Yeah? Yep. I did it myself first. So I created the course, and I went into my open math, and I created all the links and did all that stuff. And then I just went to Canvas and copied the class, and it worked. Um, I, it, I may be oversimplifying it, you then have to create, well, you have to create an account for your adjunct, 
or, or another person, whoever's teaching the course. But all of the data, uh, remember when we set up those course parameters in the LTI? If you want the data to go to the original shell course, you leave those numbers alone. If you want it to go to a specific adjunct's course or another professor's course, then you have to change those numbers and tell it, put that data into their course. And they have to become proficient in MyOpenMath. So do they still copy your MyOpenMath course into their own MyOpenMath course, or are they just sourcing from your MyOpenMath into their Canvas? Yeah. How do What they would do is they would create their own MyOpenMath account they would import all my stuff into their My Open Math, and then they would copy my Canvas course into their Canvas shell, and then we make sure that those two course numbers match up. I'm sure there's an API out there that'll do it for you. I don't have the API acknowledged to do it, so I'm sorry, but good question. Yeah. Uh, I could Google it real fast and see uh, if they have accessibility. Uh, when you do go to My Open Math, if you go to the home page, uh, there is a lot of information under this help button. Okay. And yeah, we, we could probably Google it, but uh, we've been on this. I've been on it for a while. Um, I'm starting to mass produce it out to adjunct as well. And so we're. Yeah. Everything. Um, and I didn't get into this homework assignment very much, but you can do graphs. So the students have to actually click and create a graph. Not just linear graphs, but parabolas, ellipses, hyperbolas, all of that. Um, obviously, numerical calculated questions. So if, go ahead. Yes. Um, in one of the options, and a lot of students think when they take my class, because it's online homework, that you have to be online to do your homework. And you don't. There's a print function. And so you can go in and print this off, and all of the randomly generated numbers stay the same. So you print off your 20 problems. You go offline. You do the 20 problems. When you come back, you drop in your answers. And they really like that feature. It is, it's an option, it's an option, and I turn that off and option off on quizzes and tests. And so they only have the option to print their homework on homework. But when I use this for quizzes and tests, I don't let them print. And um, we're almost out of time. I'm staying around until, you know, I'll be here till 10 o'clock if you guys want to stay till 10 o'clock. But I know dinner's coming up, and um, I'm really excited about this. And if, again, if you have any questions, um, the accessibility is one. But once you get into My Open Math, that's the first step. And then you start getting into all these options. And I would have loved to have gone over all the options in My Open Math, but there's just too many in this short period of time, so. Yeah, please email me, yep. So enjoy dinner, and if you wanna chat more, come on up, thank you.